What's up guys? Judd Grimsmo here, Fraser behind the camera. We went on a little field trip. We're back at Milterra slash Camplete. Uh, Angelo and I came here in the summer when it wasn't well below freezing and we got to tour the place when it was totally empty. So Mike's invited us back. We're gonna film as much as they let us. What I really wanna get here is how he set up the new shop, how he you know, placed machines, how he put electrical over here, how he did plumbing, how he did everything, how he thought about it. I wanna know how he freaked out about how to make this place tick. Uh, so that's why we're here because we're building our new shop right now and he's like dude you got to come up you got to check this place out so let's go take a look Mike, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, no problem. Super excited. Last time I was here, this place was empty. It was yep. like your day four of having it or something. Exactly. And I remember how quick you jumped on it, like the same day you heard about it. You're like, mine? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. We needed this place, yeah. yeah. I've been looking for years to get a new building. Right. Yeah. Well, like you. Yeah. We were looking forever, yeah. 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 And it's tough to find the right balance of office and shop and get exactly what you need. Right. So yeah, looked for years for this. And yeah, when it came on the market, grabbed it right away and yeah. It's been quite a journey to move in here. Yeah, which I mean, it's be only been how many months? Um, middle. Well, I guess I guess middle of last year we sort of started the process. Okay. It was it, it was done in stages. Yeah. Yeah. Since yeah, since summer, it was done in stages. I mean, we moved. You know, some of the equipment got that up and running, and then like three buildings before really separate. Yes, and exactly. now you yep. shoved it all into one. Yeah. So we we did that. You know, we we moved out of the we had two rental units, and then we owned the one main building. So we moved all the equipment out of the rental units, closed that down, okay. got that all up and running, then moved yeah. the main building. Yeah. So that helped that we were able to do it like that, but then it prolongs the pain, right? <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, it worked out well. Awesome, yeah, so I'm excited to see what you guys got going on. Cool, awesome. And uh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so some of the stuff we, uh, we do, some of the markets we serve, um, Obviously, uh, you know, motorsports, aerospace, medical, consumer electronics, yeah. many different, uh, many different yeah. industries. Like a candy store of beautiful stuff. <laughs> and of course, lots of stuff we can't show in a display case like this, but, uh, but yeah, these are the parts that, uh, that we can. Love it. So, awesome. All right. Let's go. Let's move on. Yep. So, uh, well, we were in 20,000 square feet spread across two buildings. Well, two units plus our original building. Uh, this is now 30,000 square feet. That's the basic uh, layout. We're actually already looking at an addition on the, uh, on the building. But yeah, we're sitting on three acres of land, 30,000 square foot building. And yeah, looking at a 10,000 square foot addition now. Which we all manufacturing. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you're like, this tiny room is where we have to put everything. Everything, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was the disadvantage here is we had a lot of office space here and not a lot of shop space. Right. But you know, every other building we looked at had almost no office and huge manufacturing space. So we'd have to build out office. Yeah, you guys so, are We are, yeah, exactly. Like full so. software company and manufacturing and- Exactly. Yeah. And even on the manufacturing side, I mean, yeah, we've, we need a fair amount of sure. engineering space and that sort of thing. So. So how have you guys mm -hmm. filled the offices? Like, well, so this is, like uh, well, the main floor here for Milterra is is almost filled. Um, yeah, it is. And then upstairs for Camplete, lots of extra space for sure. So, but problem. room to grow. I remember you thinking like, are we going to rent out some offices to people yep. or yep. still so, an option or? 
It is, definitely. Yeah. I'll show you some of the additional space that we've got. Nice. So yeah, that's an option to rent out some office and that sort of thing. But uh, we're also growing quick, so. Good. It may not make sense. Right? <laughs> yep. So the question is, will you ever outgrow this building? Or are you good? Uh, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of land. With three acres, we can sure. we can almost Keep double. We can yeah go out towards the four one and then off to the side. So we can we can double the size of the building. So that's a lot of space. Sixty thousand square feet would be ridiculous. So, I mean, yeah, like not outgrowing this. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, awesome. yep. So yeah, we can head towards the shop. So how much of the planning did you handle stressed yourself and how much did you like offload on other people? That's what I'm struggling with right now. Yeah, well, I mean, really, I did most of it myself. Yeah, um, <laughs> because, the, you know, so much of the operations of the business were already disrupted with the move that it was like, okay, now to, to also put all this on other people. Sure, they're busy. And they're work. busy, and then also dealing with the move itself, right? There's so much to do, you know, guys working with machines that then need to also take down the machine, get it ready for a move, do all sorts of stuff like that, to then have them also worried about, okay, where's everything going? How are we gonna deal with this? That's just, yeah, would have been too much. So, yeah, so this was all empty when you were here, <laughs> so. So yeah, this is a, a, a large clean room space. This was a big attraction of the building for sure, was that- This was an actual clean room, like HEPA filtered. And still is, yeah, a HEPA filtered clean room with machines in it. So this, this area that we're standing in here, here now is the airlock for, uh, for this clean room. So, but yeah, inside there is separate HVAC, temp control, humidity control, um, air quality control, everything. So that room is isolated. There's no venting between this room and the other rooms. All the air must be, you know, retained in this room. Um, and everything's that, uh, obviously affect the decision of what equipment to put in here. Absolutely. So this is largely our prototyping equipment. So this is our prototyping lab. Um, so it does some production, but largely this is, you know, people working on machines developing new products, testing things, you know, new processes. So uh, less of the actual production going on in here. Right. Um, so yeah, that was really the focus for what went into this, this space here. And then, yeah, the main manufacturing area back there is, we'll see later, is then all the production stuff. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah, we'll head this way and So, well, all the facilities were here in terms of the air filtration. So these are, you know, HEPA air returns. Yeah. So each one of these HEPA filters has its own drive motor to filter the, the incoming air. Um, and then return air is all low draw. Yeah. So, I mean, normally you've got, you know, uh, like an open air uh, return. This is all ducted return. So. The idea is you're drawing up any particles from the from the bottom and then delivering clean air from the top. So, so yes, yeah, very clean air in here and probably feel it a little more humid, but that's yeah. the humidity we're adding, not the humidity <laughs> from the machines. Well, you're so, on purpose, yes, to keep it, to keep it stable, yeah, stable humidity and temp and and uh, air quality. So yeah, prototype. Parts running here. And then you'll find this interesting for your shop. So here was a little different. Like normally you'd put a mist collector here and then just vent, you know, the clean air from the mist collector to the space. So what we're actually doing here is, is sucking the mist out of the machine, drawing it into this sort of utility room here, filtering it, HEPA filter, filtering that, and then returning that HEPA filtered air through the ceiling return there. So this is its own little That's circuit. That's its own little circuit, yep. Okay. But then keeps that noise and, and space in that other room. Yeah. So same thing for all of the machines here, all of yeah, the uh, the up. returns, yeah. So we haven't finished the ceiling in here yet. This is not, not done yet. We need another mist collector still, but. So there are mist collectors up 
So the mist collectors, yes, for for these machines um, are scattered all over the place. This one here um, comes up over here and is actually up in here and then returned over there. So, so that the oily mist from that machine goes up there and then comes out there. Um, these other machines actually return in the other room, so we'll see those as well. Um, and then, yeah, all sorts of, you know, machines here, sink, uh, hole popper, wire, our other wire over there. Um, pinch bill grinding. So, I mean, this, this is something you deal with on your, on your Swiss, right? Tons of mist, oil mist. Yep. So, I think you're using AeroX as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, the misfit, kind of the yeah, the misfit. Yep. yep. So, yeah, so that's what that's cool. going through. Is this thing, all it's doing is making blanks, like tapered blanks? Yes. So this is making, uh, yeah, tapered, uh, tapered blanks like this. Right. Yep. So that machine's then feeding these for uh, finished tool production. So a lot of the machines, I mean, when you move a machine, you got to put all the brackets back on. You got to drain all the coolants. Yep. Anything else? Um, well, yeah, all the fluids need to be removed. Yeah. Um, obviously all your disconnects and then, yeah, whatever shipping brackets you need. Right. Some of the shipping brackets though, you can, you don't necessarily need, like right. a lot of those shipping brackets are designed for like sea transport. Exactly, yeah. So they're, you know, they're really trying to protect against pretty aggressive, you know, vibrations that the machine can be exposed to. If you're driving them a short distance like that, you may not need all of that bracketing. Okay. Like some so. is clearly necessary. Some is needed. Absolutely. You know, you want to put the spindle down, you want to bolt it, but Absolutely. okay, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Because I'm like two weeks away from moving machines, probably a week and a half from prepping them. Right. Um, so this is this is good to talk about. It's perfect yeah, timing. For sure. I see you got a drip tray under this. Yes. I'm having one made for my <laughs> tornos because it's like a pig. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've got. These came with the machines you bought them. Bought these with the machines. That drip tray, yeah. But of course you can get that made. These overflow tanks and uh, oil return tanks we we designed and had made. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, that's the you know waste oil comes out here. And then it's got a float control in here, which controls a variable frequency drive, which then... You designed all of that. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's all... Okay, here's a question. How does this work for you? Do you like lay in bed and you're like, I got this idea, I need a return valve thing. And then, and then what? Do you do all the research you figured out or do you... No, definitely not. I mean, the, the, this was, was, yeah, I mean, I guess spearheaded by what I wanted to achieve in here, but... I mean, I didn't do all this engineering. That was, you know, many of the other guys in the shop here that worked together to make this happen. Sure. So, right. Nathan, for example. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so figuring out, you know, Nathan did a lot of the programming on the variable frequency drive to right. figure out, okay, controlling the flow out of the, out of the machine, what to do with the, um, with the return pump. It's like a big part of your job is just direction. Yes, definitely. You know, it's like, it's like, here's a project, go, go. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do something else. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and as you grow, I mean, that's, that's absolutely it. You gotta right. learn to let go of some things uh, and just say, I'm listen. So hard <laughs> I know. Yeah, you wanna still program the machine, you wanna do all that stuff, and yeah, it's, it's yeah. tough. But yeah, I mean, a big, big project in here was certainly all of the, the centralized, uh, you know, oil filtration, delivery, and, and chilling. So all of the grinders, end mill grinders, use centralized? Yes, so that's oil. that's high pressure um, and low pressure for the uh, for the process, and then waste oil return. It's just PVC, like, glued together. Yep. That's, that's no pressure, right? That's just lift pressure from the, uh, from the tank. But yeah, this is 100 PSI and, well, 20. Yeah, so you, you, gotta... you had a simple version of it at the old shop, yes. but now it's more complicated because you're going up and around. And Absolutely, I mean, we're going way to the other end of the building with these, right. right? So there's a separate room that then has all the filtration system to to handle all these machines. And you want it to scale it according to 
eventually we're gonna have 10 grinders. Exactly, so yeah, up in the ceiling there, I don't know if we can still see, but you know, we've got the mains, the mains running here, and then, you know, there's drops here and additional drops down this way so that we can add additional piping for all that. So as we add additional machines, we can just connect to the drops. Yeah. So yeah, that way you've got, you know, high pressure delivered at each machine and then the machine just calls for it or not, right? right? Rather yeah. than communicating directly to the pumps to say, send me this, it's just opening a valve. Love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on an idea in my head for a coolant top up for all my machines. Yep. Like if I just run a centralized pipe between all of them, while I while I have my plumber in there to do that, yep. then I can I can figure out all this valvey stuff later, I love I'm float valves and I'm things sure like that. Sure, you're doing that. Yeah, I'm curious, because um, so like running around with buckets and mixing up two percent, it's stupid. It's like a waste of time. Yep. So, so the drops you see various drops here for the for the machines on the wall. Yeah. So, the two left ones are chiller lines. Then there's. Um, I don't know which one it is there. One of those gray lines is our is our RO water delivery. Okay. So we've then got RO water available at each of the machines, which is fed from this room here. So you chose to go RO, not, um, uh, what's the other one? Not distilled, but the other one. Uh, Deionized. Deionized. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we use RO. I mean, so this is our main, main RO tank. So we've got a, a forced, a pressurized uh, um, RO system. So this is not uh, this is not working off of just uh, line pressure from the city. This oh, is okay. work. This has a pressure a pressure pump that's forcing water through the uh, through the membranes. Uh, so it's it's much higher flow. Okay. Right. Like a normal RO system is very low flow because it's just line pressure. It's just right. the city line uh, water pressure. While this is pressurizing those membranes and producing much more flow. Huh. And then, yeah, a big storage tank. I mean, so you're pumping into this, you're filling this. Yes, that's necessary. filling this, and then this, and this was sized according to like a need. Yes, exactly. Like so, lot. well, right. So this is a thousand liters. Right. Um, you get this thing. You can, you you can buy them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I've never dealt anything bigger than like five gallons. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so the problem with us is like, what do you do when you're changing? If you need to flush your entire coolant system. You know, once a year you replace all the coolant, start fresh, clean everything out. Right. What do you do? Now you need 600, 700, maybe 800 liters in one shot. Right. Right? So it takes probably quite a long time to fill it up. It takes a very long time to fill this. So yeah, we wanted to have enough available so that when we want to do that change, you can drain this whole tank down right. Right. and then it slowly replenishes. I mean, on a normal basis, yeah. I mean, obviously we're down this much in the last, well, day probably, right? So we've used up. But it's running now. So it's but it's running now, filling, it's slowly filling, filling this. Yeah, so overnight it'll go back. Okay. Oh no, this will fill back up overnight. Um, so really this is overkill on a normal basis. You know, you, you need a much smaller tank, but if we want to refill the entire machine, then, you know, we need that. So this is your, this is your water. This is just RO water. Coolant in. Mix is done normally right at the machine. So we can talk about that too. I'll show you what our plan is for that. But right now we're just delivering RO water. Because my idea was having a similar, like a big IBC tub or something. Yep. And then with actual mixed with coolant. deionized water filling into it and mixing the coolant as your top up. Yep. And then just, I've got however many gallons, liters. Problem is you've got to deal with bacteria yeah, then, right? I so know. you do, right? I mean, that's yeah. going to... Now you now you've got coolant just sitting there, not doing anything for right. a long period. You've got to deal with bacteria. So and if you keep adding and topping up, then that bacteria doesn't necessarily leave. It never leaves. Yeah. So, <laughs> so these are the things. Yeah. So that's why I felt okay. The storage tank like this, we can okay. then just deliver RO water per machine per machine and deal with the mixing right at the machine. Okay. So. I see you got your misfit, like you were saying. Right yeah, there. so that's that's feeding that, that's filtering yeah. air from that machine we saw outside. Uh, and then there's a you know a, a delivery pump here, so the that's water. that's pressurizing the line for RO water. Oh, that's one of those Grunfos like yes, uh, all constant pressure thing. Constant, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, as the pressure, as this line pressure lowers, it it senses that and just kicks on and, and yeah, pressurizes that. So it's like that. you have a your own water gun. Yes. At the other side. With RO, Love yeah. It. Love it, love it. So, this place is awesome. 
And that is separate from, from the drinking water. So that's not, we don't use that for drinking water. We got a separate RO for, uh, for drinking water supply. And then of course, that's also using softened water. So you gotta of course make sure you soften the water. Oh, it's not as hard probably where you are. We've got very hard water here. So I haven't had it tested, but I, I think it's right in the middle. Okay. Like, so we've got yeah extremely hard water here. So we have a central softener that softens, softens all the water supply for the building. So. So then, yeah, off the, you know, that RO water then runs all the way around and then provides, you know. Ah, I'm like, why are they crooked? Because you got a drain <laughs> and the drain just goes right back into the, I love it. Yeah. You guys designed this or? Well, just, <laughs> we, yeah, we designed it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we put a chunk of metal under the, under the chip bin and yeah, that's our design. I mean, it will drain, but yeah, these aren't the best. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of chip bins have a proper baffle here and then it drains really nicely. These ones don't, so we kick them hard. up on an angle. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm still in the uh, Rubbermaid tubs, right. and you pour it, and it's like all the coolant comes out. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This at least you can return back to the machine. Love it. So, but yeah, then these lines, you know, off the wall are all your air and water and whatever, Some right? Of these were here. Yes, yeah, so. They came with the building. Yeah, because they were doing, this was a laboratory before, so they had already nitrogen, um, a vacuum line, and compressed air. Okay. So they were already, a lot of that was already there. These additional insulated lines, those are our central chilling lines. So... Or the grinding fluid? No, so that's, that's chilled water, which then chills the machines. So, like on a normal, you know, normal machine, you've got a a chiller like this, right? A heat exchanger. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is taking the, you know, central coolant in the um, chiller fluid in the machine that chills your spindle, your drives, everything, yeah. brings it back here, chills that, and then delivers it back to the machine. Keeps the machine at the constant temp. Um, so right now, normally that's blowing hot air, you know, affecting the temperature in this in this room. Right. So what we're doing is converting all of these over to water chilled. So that's what all those lines are for. Oh, so they will be. So those will connect to... So basically, it's not that you won't need that, it's just that won't be in this room. Actually, we're gonna keep each of these in this room because of what I wanted was, like we could just eliminate the chiller and, right. and run the machines off of a central chilled system. The problem is if that goes down, all your machines go down. So, so you're going to run the chilled water through those. They're not going to do much. Exactly. Yeah. They're not going to run at all. I love how you said that. What I wanted was, because <laughs> you got these ideas in your head. You're yeah. like, ideally, it's like this. It's perfect. So because normally, yeah, you either buy an air chiller like that or you buy a water chilling system right. or you connect to a central system. Like at, at the current facility in Germany, they have centralized too. Central, right. So like it's big pipes going up the walls outside, things on the roof. For sure. So, so like, but if that fails, the field, then... Yeah, you're you're right. So the other problem is in the winter time, you actually don't want to extract all the heat from the machine and send it outside. Yeah. You want it in here for heating. Right. So you're making the heat. We're making the heat, why throw it outside? Yeah. So at that point you can turn off the water chilling and just allow the hot air to go into the room. Well ha have it be automatic, right. ambient temperature controlled. That's what the it does then. Yeah. So it's if you've got that set point done correctly, then you know the water cooling is, is chilling the chiller. It doesn't need to pump hot air into the room. Yeah. Kidding and me then, sort of. yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then we ended up going with, I mean, another thing is machine drops, like how you handle power. So, yeah. you know, we hard, hard lined everything. Um, well, because you have the ceiling, so you can hide everything up yes, there. Yes, exactly. So, like, so, and because it's a ducted return, we can actually put transformers in the ceiling as well. So there's transformers actually in the ceiling. We need ducted return. Um, because all of the, like normally, normally, you know, in a regular dropped ceiling, 
you just have holes to the drop ceiling. Okay. So the HVAC system just draws air from the ceiling space, which oh, is like yeah, a huge yeah. duct. Uh, in a ducted return system, the supply air is all coming through uh, these Got HEPA it. filters Got or it. a bypass. And then the return is all coming from the ground, right? The low ducts that you see all yeah. supply the air back. So the, the ceiling space is not part of the HVAC system. Otherwise, if you, you know, if something happens to the transformer, it's now sucking that smoke through the HVAC system and blowing it. So, got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I love how you utilize the ceiling. Yeah. Like, something I've got big in my mind is nothing on the floor. I don't want to yes. step over cords or cooling yeah. lines or anything. And you've sure. done a really good job here. Yeah, so that's, yeah, what we're trying to achieve here with all the, yeah. all the drops, right? I mean, normally we would have had to have a, you know, a big system beside this to filter all this oil. This too, exactly. So yeah, I'm gonna mount those up on the wall. Yep. Get them out of my face. I'm even. I'm probably just gonna go from you know the wall, and then down to the machine. Yep. So like a walking path behind it, but that's that's it. Yeah. Otherwise, right. So. Yeah, I mean, even well, you can see up here, for example, like this needed a large supply, right? So we actually put the brake, the disconnect, right you know, at the back of the machine and then just, yeah, straight up and in the ceiling. Yeah. And then this is also, I mean, you can see in there, but yeah, the mist collector is actually on the wall really? above the ceiling over there. And you did and then, water line. Uh, air. So air? air, yep. So our air lines come down through this drop as well as, you know, right. 110 power. So each of those, you well, know, it's silver how, drops. How much you don't have 110 power at the machine. I know. Right? Yeah, but now you've, you've solved that. You've got a couple here. And ethernet cables and everything. Yeah, so all the, right, all the networking. Each of those square drops has networking, power, and uh, air. Yeah. Forgetting ideas? Oh, so many ideas. <laughs> it's good to know I'm not the only crazy person, like, yeah. like obsessing about everything. I obsessed about a lot of stuff here, that's for sure, yeah. And, and part of it too is is what is permanent and what might move in the totally. future, right? So like that machine's gonna move, these machines here will move. So, you know, you take it to a different level when you know that, okay, that machine's gonna move in six months or whatever, right? You don't need to worry about, like you were talking about transformers, that machine has a transformer sitting on the floor because it's gonna move. Right. So yeah. I wasn't too worried about so that. So you're being logical with yeah. With your permanency, yeah. Like, I'm thinking about that too. Like, the machines are the big thing. I need to know where they're going to go. They're probably not going to move afterwards. Yeah. All the office crap and stuff, like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I don't, for sure. Where all the tool benches go, like, we'll figure it out. That, you, yeah, you'll fill that in wherever, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. We weren't too worried about that. Like, okay, here, you know, this works nice right here. Yeah, I see a lot of Canadian tire stuff. Yeah, exactly. Great. <laughs> yeah, works excellent. This worked well for us, this floor. Um, we did, yeah. Yeah, so for us, we were, you know, worked this as a hallway and, but yeah, to have that in that space didn't really make sense. Right. You'd be cutting around all this. So we're doing epoxy over the whole thing. Right. If it turns out to be a skating rink, uh, maybe we'll put this on top of it, just in walking paths or something. Yep. Yeah, epoxy can get, especially if you're working with oil, it yeah. can get pretty Look, with crazy. with the drip tray, it should be fine. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that should protect you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah, just make sure you're, you know, outside of every, don't make a drip tray that big. Yeah. Make it that big. <laughs> oh, yeah. You get a drip from yeah. here, it's got to land in there. Yep, yep. So. Yeah, the Tornos is pretty square okay. all around. And then I've got my, um, parts carousel, my parts catcher, right. little yellow printed, 3D yeah, printed yeah, thing, yeah. and that drips because all the oily parts drop into it. Sure. So I'm just going to make like a little catch can underneath that shoves it, that dr drips it back in. Right. Uh, and then after that, the drip tray should be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that cool. I'm glad I came on a work day. Yeah. Everything's busy and exactly. active and... Yeah. So... Yeah, so this clean room extends uh, through to here. Okay. Our tool crib. Uh, got one of those coming. 
Nice. I'm excited. You will be happy with it. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I've seen them, but I've never like used it or anything, but. That's a great product. John, can you explain what this is? This is a uh, Regal Fix power grip um, gripping station. So you got, <laughs> I love your broken collets here. <laughs> um, downside is when you break it, you got like what, a hundred or $200 collet to replace. But that's actually a good thing. Cause yeah. I mean, you know, on a hydraulic holder, of course you break a tool in a hydraulic holder, the whole holder is, like is dead. Dollars, like five, Way six, more, maybe. yeah. While, you know, here at least you're, Okay, you're ruining a collet, but right. replace the collet and you're fine. I, like, I'm at that level with ER collets now. Yes. Like, I use them a lot, and if I trash one, I'm like, man, it's like $30, $60, whatever. Right. Much but more much more, but, but it's, everything is stepping up the business, so like, right. you just gotta eat that pain a little bit higher. You do. Um, but the performance and the reliability and the consistency and the gripping and the run out is amazing supposed course. to be amazing. Yes. So, it is. I'm excited to see that. Cooling through on the machine that's going? Heck yeah. Okay. I think it's a thousand PSI. Good. So yeah, of course, then you've got that option with these two, right? Right. I got some of you these. You can add, the holes yeah, on the exactly, outside. like this. Yeah. So you've got the holes on the outside right. that, that, you know, allow you to deliver coolant. So the coolant goes right, right exactly. the outside of the tool. Yeah. Or you get through these through holes. The hole through the middle. Like yes. Or exactly. Then you get the sealed version of this. Yeah. But if you don't have, yeah, if you don't have coolant holes in the tool, you can at least deliver it right to the cutting. Nice. And then this is what you're using for HSK? Uh, yes, just to yeah so remove tools for, yet, yeah. So. They are very useful. What brand? Well, I don't actually know. Tooling system, oh, Iskar is that one. Yeah, I'll find something. Yeah, there's so, readily available. Okay, so just side pinch. Yeah, so, you're right, this is side clamping because this is for uh, 40E, which has no, yeah, like nothing to I lock have. on, right? Yeah. You've got 40 or? 40. Okay. I, I forget if it's E or A, but I don't think there's drive. Well, there might be drive lugs. Like, I can't remember. What's the spindle speed on the? 42,000. Oh, and you've got that spindle, yeah. Okay. So. So this is what I've, I've got a whole bunch of these yeah. coming in. I ordered like, I don't know, 150 of them. Yep. Sick. You guys made this here? Uh, yes. Most likely? Yep. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting so pumped for this current to come in. So this is a nice layout. This is everything you need. You got some working space. You got all the end mills in here, I assume. Yeah. All, lots of end mill room. That's a nice small one too. If you need, need reach or space. Uh, this, oh, this is the tribos. That's a tribo system. So that's it's great like for a really spring. narrow, oh, yeah, you know. Oh yeah, clearance is nothing. Like you can rub up against the exactly. wall Exactly, yeah. So we use those when we require a lot of clearance or extensions, things like that. Yeah. Because you've got almost no, you know, the interface is so is so small that you can have a very narrow extension or holder. Um, rest are in the machine, but. So you've got your end mills. I see titanium. Yeah. I see various one millimeter, two millimeter, three. I see a bad tools. <clears throat> Big tools, two, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's terribly well organized sure. at the moment because we moved, but. I'm, I'm more curious like, yeah. how you're getting by, how you're doing it. Yep. And then I'm sure you've got. It's all, all by sizes and then, um, like you when, know, if there's specific. When you guys need a tool, they know where to go? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the other thing we're changing to as well, which I guess you'll have on your machine too, is it, you've got a lot of tool capacity in the machine, yeah. right? Yeah. So. 210. There you go. So you'll have a lot of stuff just prepped already, right. ready to go, right? And running this, okay, it doesn't matter. It's already right loaded. There, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited. you're not doing a lot of teardowns and setups and this sort of thing, so. But we've also got, now we're gonna have four mills. Your two used ones that are HSK as well. Right. They're gonna be flexible. Yep. The current's gonna be load and go. And the Mori as well, Cat 40 is, right. you know, changing stuff out every day. Right. So uh, yeah, we need, we gotta figure this out. Yeah, for sure. But it's. I'm not worried about it yet. Right. We'll make it work. Yes, exactly. You also got to experiment with a different, a few different things and see what, yeah, 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 what works best for you. So then we can, you know, check once the tool is assembled, we can check run out and optimize that over here on our Zoller. We're also checking grinding wheels and stuff like that here, but uh, yeah, but this is really our. Want to be able to check it as well as possible. For sure. 
That's normally done in, yeah, on a different machine. Okay. This we're using primarily for supporting milling. This is for a tool holder. For a tool holder, holder for yes. For an end mill by itself. Exactly. Got it. Obviously, this is to measure the end mill as well, but yeah, we're checking installed runout and, and this sort of thing. Fraser, check this out. Is this metric? Yeah. I love how it's so accurate that it's actually just standing here, <laughs> not doing anything. It's flickering between eight and nine. Yeah. That's awesome. Tenth of micro, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So yeah. So out into the shop. Is um, the door already here? No, this we added. I mean, all this was reconfigured, right? This was actually a separate room that was blocked off over yeah. here. So we tore this wall out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so this was all separate. You know, tore anybody, down that wall. Yet? No, it's actually got a, <laughs> it's got a like a pneumatic sensor as well. Okay. So if it touches anything, it goes okay. back anyways. If you manage to fool it and you know, okay. yeah, that's gentle. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that's to seal off the, you know, obviously the clean room from the normal manufacturing space. Also, all temperature controlled in here, okay. but not HEPA filtered. So this is not is fine. filtered, yeah, shop space. So it's. Uh, yeah, you've got AC and, uh, yeah. I didn't even know they made a 1050. Yeah, so, so those are the units doing the grinders in the other room. So the, right. the three grinders you with saw oil. over there with oil, yeah, so that's sucking the oil here, filtering it, it's got the HEPA filter stack on it as well, yep. and then returning that filtered air back to the room. Nice. So. Yeah, because I remember when we toured this place first, you're like, if this is all the room I have to put CNC <laughs> machines, I don't know. Yep. So I'm glad to see you got some five axes in there. Yep. Uh, in the other, the yeah, exactly. We put yeah the prototype machines over there. Yeah. Production is is here then. And are these all the old machines you had before? That looks pretty. No, this just arrived on Monday. Two days ago. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is brand new, not hooked up at all yet. Yeah. Um, the Mazak lathe we had. That's the. Uh, glass scale version of that lathe, oh, really? so. You had this for a long time? We had this for a long time, yeah. yeah. And this blanks out the turbo? Uh, yep, exactly. And then the, the 400U we had before as well, that's the linear motor, 42,000 RPM machine. So that's, uh, that's the machine we had before that was hooked up to our old robotic cell. Okay, what does that mean? Well, so that's the new one in that's there now. The new robotic cell. Yeah, so that's not been set up yet. That also just arrived on Monday. Yes, yeah, so, it. right, so the racking is the same. Yeah. We're using the same fixturing, all that's reused, all that racking is identical. The load station is the same. The wash station is the same. It's not here yet, it's in the other room, but. Is this bolted to the ground? This is not yet bolted down. Will it be though? It will be, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. So let me see if I can understand this. You'll have a big yellow fan of Grobot or whatever yep. on that rack. It goes down the rails. Yep. It picks off the grocery store shelf, whatever pallet is scheduled to run next, yep. puts it in the machine, takes out a finished pallet, yep. puts it ready for inspection for the operator. Right into the CMM for inspection. Oh, of course, it inspects it by itself. Yeah. The, uh, the shop floor CMM, yep. the open atmosphere one. And then, and like, then it returns it to the rack. As much as you can do automated, like the better. Exactly. For higher volume, like you got, you guys make a lot of parts. We do, but the for us the mix is very high, yeah. right? Some yeah. of it's only could That's be hard. two parts a month. Yeah. That's it, right? For for but months on end. You don't want to think about it really. And you like schedule. The nice thing is, I mean, normally if you had to make two parts a month, you'd, you know, you'd make them all in one run and then just inventory them. Yeah. With this, we're able to have a huge mix of parts and be able to just make two in a month, two of this, four of that, 10 of this, 20 of this, 100 of that, whatever it is. So what's this? <laughs> so this is, uh, these are all the chips. Oh, this is what you did on the yeah, exactly. Too, right? So all the chips coming out of the machine will build up into a slurry and then pump up into here, 
and deliver it to, uh, to filtration. So instead of a chip conveyor, are you purposely programming to make smaller chips? Uh, no, but with you the 42,000 like, RPM spindle, you end up making okay. pretty small chips anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just making so. a coolant chip slurry yep. and just blasting it through all the PVC yep. to the paper band filter that I saw. Exactly. And then you have clean coolant coming back. Yes. Through the pressurized lines. Exactly. So is your coolant pump back there? Coolant pump is back there. Okay. Yeah. Instead so. of like this one's here. Uh, right, exactly. This, this of course, yeah, is, this is, is closed here, right? Itself, so, yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, coolant coming down. It's so, yeah, here you got your chips. But this chips. guy makes monster chips. Well, right, exactly. Yeah, this you're is, not, you're, not you're not gonna be, yeah, blowing this through in a slurry, right? Exactly. This would be a disaster, right? But, uh... But, yeah, mill tends to make, you know... Tiny chips. Cornmeal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, of course, the problem is they float. So, right. you know, it's a nightmare for a chip conveyor anyways. So turn it into a slurry and blast it wherever you need it. So yeah, so then that's delivered over here for now. I mean, this is also very temporary while we get the cell set up. Um, but yes, that's then delivered as a slurry and then filtered and then returned. So. It's just like nonstop creative solutions to like, how can we do this better? Okay, let's try that. Yeah, that so, let's try it again. I mean, this kind of tower then creates, yeah, chip chip removal. I mean, some of these chips are fairly large. You know, they're... Yeah. Do you clog the plumbing? Nope. Okay, that's good. No. Like, I noticed that with the shop vac when I'm trying to clean up, like, it clogs. It, that clogs, but okay. yeah, I mean, you're dealing with a... I mean, a shop vac's way lower power than what right. we're dealing with here, and and you've got that slurry, right? You're not sucking it with air. You're yeah, you're blasting that slurry here, and then you know all the chips are collecting here, the filtering through, and then the small stuff's being removed by the the filter, and then of course the final final cartridge filtration as well. Actually, I don't know if this one has a cartridge. No, it doesn't. Not on this one, because we don't have, we use the cartridge on the, uh, the through coolant. Okay. So what do you guys do for air? Like, what went into the air planning thinking? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot went into that. Yeah. The, um, so really what we tried to do, we use all trans or, uh, you know, the, the trans air uh, yeah, the blue, piping. blue piping, exactly, hard lines. Hard lines. And we try to keep that as large as possible. I mean, if you keep a fairly size large, size I think it's, yeah, it's actually metric. I think it's 40 mil. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the main lines are all, all this larger size, which then sort of acts like a huge storage tank, right? right? Okay. It's way larger than what you need, right. but because of the large piping, it then acts like a reservoir. Uh, and then what we did here on this mezzanine, we built this, built this mezzanine and then put all of our services up here. So the chillers, everything is up over here. So nice. this is something to consider too. How tall is this, like 30 feet? It's uh, clear, it's 20, 28 feet, 27 it's like, it's like feet. It's like wasted space. It's like a lot of wasted space, there, exactly, like, yeah. yep. So, so that's cool that you got to put there and, and lose almost nothing underneath. Yeah, so we can go up there if you want. Um, so this is something to consider instead of Do you want to come up too or mounting. You good? So this is something to consider. I mean, it looks pretty rough, but who cares, you right? Had the same thing at the old shop, though. You had the little upstairs. We like, did, or... yeah, but that was part of the building, right? That right. wasn't added. Yeah. So, so yeah, we built built this and. The nice thing is you can you can put a whole bunch of stuff then up on a space that you can work on rather than mounting stuff just off the ceiling, right? So so like there, okay, you've got yeah, how do you, you know that? how do you change the filters? Well, so there we can go up from the ground, yeah. right? But but and there, okay, with small stuff on the wall, fine. But here with all this other equipment and stuff like that, it's nice to have a mezzanine where you can actually work on this equipment and not have to worry about, you know separately mounting each item. You've got the space here, you just put the item down, whether it's your chiller, your air handling, transformer, power, whatever it is. 
So, so three of the chillers are here. There'll be a fourth chiller over there. Um, and then we've got, uh, you know, an inline uh, capacitance here for the air system. So an inline tank for, uh, to buffer the air supply because over here, we're basically at the farthest point from the air compressor, which is way at the other end of the building. This is a backup air compressor. Backup. So not, not normally running. Right. This is purely for backup. So rather than selling it, I said, might as well keep it, right. put the old air dryer on it and we'll just use it for backup. If the air ever goes down, your whole shop goes down know, unless right? you've got a backup. So yeah. even just for regular maintenance on the, on the main air compressor, True. nice to have a backup. So you're gonna plumb it up and make it? It's like already all plumbed. Okay. So yeah. yeah, so this basically is all plumbed through into the system. So yeah, if we wanna run this, we just open the valves and, and run it. And then, yeah, all this like drops over here, all to run all the main services then into the extension eventually. So that's the chilled, chilled water lines, which now just are truncated, but that can then extend all the way down to the, the additional space. This would all come off and then the mezzanine would extend as well. So we'd, you know, build this mezzanine. This is all, yeah, movable. I mean, it's a bit of work, but yeah, we can move all this stuff. And sometimes it's almost easier to just build a, a structure like this than to worry about mounting each item on the wall. Yeah. So. Something to uh, for sure. No, I'm, I'm super happy we get this on film. Yeah. The thought process, the what you guys chose to do, maybe what you wanted to do, but. A lot of people, like I've got two or three friends right now actively building shops or moving right. or something like that, like right now. <laughs> and they're like drooling for this video. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, you get a decent view here. I mean, it's obviously it's, it's chaos at the moment, but, but yeah, you can see the, you know, the main robot rail here, which will run uh, and feed all these machines. So this is, what we had before, but this is much longer now. This is almost twice the length of what we had before. Yeah. And it's set up to actually double in length again. So the idea is that, you know, when we punch through the wall over there and add another 10,000 square feet, we can double this whole rail length and add another eight machines over there, all fed by the same rail. Oh yeah. So you're literally just mounting machines around the yep. rail and exactly. you're racked on this side yep. and it just goes pick, hmm, which machine do I want to go on today? And it chooses automatically. Well, you can tell it either, okay. you know, you can run this part on these two machines or only this machine or, you know, prioritize one over the other. And then, yeah, it can then also figure out, okay, that machine has a broken tool, can't run there, I'll run there instead. So, That's cool. yeah, it's pretty neat. Obviously there'll be doors here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's currently the chiller for that machine over there, right? Did you have that one before? Uh, no, that's a new, uh, it's, a new. it's the big. same It's the same size as the 800 we had before, but it's okay. the latest version and also has turning. So that's a huge 40 inch right. lathe as well. Yeah. It's giant. It's giant. But yeah, this way too, same, same idea here, right? Like each one of these four chillers that's up here would then run off of the, the chilled water lines, right. right? So the chilled water would come under here and, and uh, chill these chillers. It's like you're pre-chilling. Basically, Basically, yes. Yeah. So, so as far as the chiller's concerned, it sees that you know, the coolant is always at the right level. If it's not, if that system gets overwhelmed, then the fan just kicks on and it blows hot air here. Okay. But then again, in the winter time, yeah, you want we can shut this off and now this is just heating this room. This hot air is blowing up here. You know, we'll add ducting here and basically blow the hot air into the shop. Do it now. <laughs> exactly. Are you happy with the so, building? Very happy. Yeah. Yep. Good. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is.
I mean, I would. I don't know if you're doing anything with the floor thickness. No. Um, you know, you have smaller machines, but right. certainly for that large machine, it would have been nice to have a thicker floor. So, you know, with building the extension, we can start from fresh, put exactly the floor we want, and then move the larger machine to the extension. That's logical. Yeah, of course. Like even even the shop right now. It's great for now. We'll probably not be in there forever if we keep yeah. growing and growing. And then it's like, it's got everything we need for the next like five years. Yeah. We'll be great. Yeah. Maybe the floors are only six inches or whatever, but it's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Next building, hopefully, you know, let's make a lot of money between now and then and then do whatever, <laughs> yeah, we, want. Do whatever we want. Give me yeah. 24 inch floors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Grace and I have been talking about lighting. Yes. Did you guys put this in or was it here already? We put this in. Okay. So we, yeah, we replaced everything with uh, LED lighting. So, yeah, you waste a lot right. of power on... Do you remember the specs? Color temperature, CRI? I don't remember, but I can, I can give you all that. Yeah, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember that, but... Um... So how's the lighting, Fraser? It's good? It film's good? good. <laughs> like, he's going to the lighting stores with this camera. He'd be like, can you turn that one on? Let me film it. Eh. <laughs> oh, Temp's a little high. Let exactly. Me yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. I nailed down. We're going to get the round UFO lights. Yep. Which, if we space them properly, they should uh, flood properly. Yeah. And, yeah, like 5,000K, uh, I think 18 or 19,000 lumens. And uh, you want a lot of light, and it's nice to have it high so it, it blends nicely you don't get so many shadows. On the ground, ground. exactly. Yeah, yeah it's... it's you got some space tonight. Like, yeah. Close. We did that. I mean, you'll see a little, like, there's a bit of gap in the middle here, but that's right, right over the cell, which doesn't... Right. The robot doesn't need light. Did you have a lighting company, like, help you with the layout and stuff? Because they will. They will. Yeah. We did that ourselves. Okay. I mean, this was also, we knew what we had in the old shop. We knew what we liked, didn't like, so we based it a lot on that. Another thing is... Yeah, central transformer. So all those machines you see down there are running off of this large transformer. Of course. So well, I just keep buying more machines and they're like, you need a transformer. Then you buy another machine, you need a transformer. Yeah, so I've got like you gotta six. You've got to deal with all that space, right? Yeah. For each of the transformers. But really it's just the KVA and the voltage. Different machines are different voltage. Exactly, so. But so you keep buying microns, so they're probably all 400. Well, they're all 400 volts, yeah. But we do have 208s as well. The Mazak, for example, runs off of, okay. you know, a separate transformer that runs the, uh, the 208 stuff. Right, So. that's clever. Um, and if you over-spec a transformer, it's no big deal? No big deal. Right. Yeah. So you plan money, for, plan for, yeah, it's more money, but you yeah. plan for growth or whatever. For sure. So, so yeah, this transformer then has all these disconnects. The disconnects then run to each of those machines. Do you know how much power comes to the building? How many amps? Yeah. Uh, Probably 600 volts, like ours. It's, right? it's 600 volts, yeah. Uh, which is nice. We have an advantage there for sure that you know, when you're running 600 volts, so, you know, the main feed then for all of this, right, yeah. runs over here from a 600 volt panel down down over there. So, you know, all of those machines are then fed off a small, a yeah. small line, right? Um, but for the entire building, I'm not sure. I forget the, uh, the total amp for the, uh, the building. Because in our old shop now, we have 100 amps, and our guy's like, yeah, that's, you're maxed. At the limit, yeah. The new building has 200 in each building, front and back. Yep. Like, one's going to be a machine shop with everything. So we've got That's 200 to play I with think, there. I think we're 500 amps here. Okay. Yeah. But you're also stuffing, like, close to 20 machines. A lot of equipment in here, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All of those mist collectors run off of a variable frequency drive. Oh. Yeah, so actually what's happening here is the the machine is, is telling it what state the machine is in, whether it's in normal operation right. or whether the automation door has opened. Okay. So in normal operation, you actually need very little uh, mist collection. You don't want to suck up all that mist. You just want enough negative pressure that nothing's coming out of the machine. Okay. You're not trying to suck up all the mist and filter it. Right. Leave it in the machine, right? So. So what's happening here is this is at a, you know, running at a lower speed when the robot door is closed. The moment the robot door is going to open, 
we want to ramp that up as quickly as possible to you know very high suction yeah. to not spill out all of a sudden you're opening that door all that mist is going to come out yeah. so so this is then programmed this is then um, told by the machine what state it's in and then this ramps up to full power sucks out all the uh, you can all the mist these based on inputs yes do whatever exactly you want. so the inputs you know are coming from the machine right well, and those are like multi cables. yeah so this There's is data there. this is yeah all the the communication from the machines right. telling telling the variable frequency drive what to do what speed to run at so you also save a lot of power then too with the the mist collector only running at a very low speed in normal operation and then ramping up and down now the other thing is we're charged on on peak power usage right so you think about you know driving an electric car how much power you use when you actually floor it that's the advantage of an electric motor right. got massive amounts of torque it can ramp up very quickly but uses a lot of power so but to cruise like to cruise uses very little yeah, yeah. so the moment you you know turn on an electric motor with a switch it's going full power right, right? so the the power requirement is huge if you use a variable frequency drive, you can ramp that up slowly so you don't have that huge power spike. Because you also don't want to go on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Right, exactly. Yeah. And um, you're being hit, you're being charged for that peak. So that motor spike of the motor ramping up like your is hitting bill. your electricity bill. Wow. Yeah, so, so if you've got variable frequency drives, you can ramp that up slowly and, and not have that peak demand. So and control of, that better. Instead of going like this and then settling, yes. you just go into the settle. Right, we just ramp up slowly to that settle point and, yeah. right? Because yeah, the moment you turn on an electric motor, it's got, so you can see now. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yeah, this just ramped up that to the higher speed. Down. Yeah, so, and now it's and gone now back it's down, down again. Yeah. So the robot door closed, so and that now that's ramped. RPM? Like that's, uh, um, or just some, some yes. value or something. <laughs> it's, yeah, roughly yeah, RPM, yes. It's not exact, but right. yep. So that's our main, like the main 600 volt right. panel that services yeah. the rear of the building. So we had to add all that to bring 600 volts back here to then supply the multiple transformers. So that additional 600 volt subsurface was yep. was added. See, this is 400 amps. Yes. Just that. Yeah. So we don't have to get into specifics, but when it comes to the cost of doing all this, after buying the building yeah. and like spending, I mean, you spent a lot of money to do this. You had to, it's that's what it takes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for right. sure. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, you think, okay, there's, yeah, the machine move, there's the disconnects, there's the service to get everything back up and running again. Yeah. All the just normal parts of a move, you know, like moving a house. Okay, you gotta have movers, you gotta, right tear everything down, put everything back. But then, you know, if you're, <laughs> you're moving your house, but then also ripping down walls and replacing carpet and, renovating. you know, renovating, putting extensions on, this sort of thing, that's... Yeah. While like, you're also buying more machines and... While equipment, changing equipment. Inventing stuff. Yeah, it's, it gets to be very expensive. Right. So yeah, for sure, that was, that was important to bring, build up you know, a, a bit of a war chest to be able to say, okay, beforehand, beforehand to say, okay, now we're ready to move. And right. yeah. And have you been slowly building that up over time? Yes, You're like, definitely. You've been looking for a long We've time. We've been looking for years. Yeah. So yeah, that's built up over time to know that, okay. okay, we need that for the move. Yeah, for us, I mean, we've built up our little nest egg of moving money too, which is a lot <laughs> for us. And uh, haven't had it for years, but the past certainly six months, we're like, okay, we know it's coming. We know, let's yeah. make sure we have, let's build You're revenue. Yeah. yeah, let's it always start costs saving more money. Than you think it will. I know. Well, I'm, I'm there now. I've spent a little bit and now I'm going to be spending a lot. Yeah. So hopefully in a month or two, it's not exceeding what I'm. And it's, it's very hard not to do like, you know, when you're, you want to put that transformer up on the wall, it's like, oh, but we could also do this. We could also, yeah. you know, it's hard not to do those things when you're at that stage. It's like, well, well if I don't do it now, exactly. it's not going to happen. It's so. like painting the floors. If I don't right. epoxy them now, they're not getting epoxy. Right, right. So, and I want it, darn it. So That's exactly right. <laughs> but that means I can't do this other thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Is there anything you were not able to do either due to time or money or capability? Well, 
I would have I would have loved to do you know extension as part of this so that we're not in a situation where we're then like some of these machines are going to have to move, yeah. right? But that was just too much. I mean, to jump from twenty thousand square feet to thirty and then also add another ten is too much. Yeah, so that's, so, that's a choice you made. Yeah, and, uh, and then whatever it's there, we'll do it later. Yep, yep. So. You know, and yeah, okay, we'll have to move some of this stuff. This machine would move, whatever. But, but the good thing is, this is enough room for now. It is. It is. Yeah. And uh, and that'll grow. For sure. Yep. And then uh, we uh, we actually added some uh, inexpensive additions. So this is. Do you have dock level access? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, not dock level. Not dock level. Ground. Okay, just ground level. Yeah. So. With dock level access, um, you know, we don't receive shipments, you know, that we would require this dock level access. So we basically I was like, why is it dark outside? <laughs> we basically <laughs> built an extension That's awesome. to store all the. This is a trailer. This is a trailer. Just it's a like a decommissioned trailer, which yeah. you can get for next to nothing. Right. And like in our building, there's a couple there. storage containers, like the metal yes. ones, yep. Sea Voyage ones. And there's one right beside the building in the little laneway. Yep. And it's empty. And they're like, you guys go nuts. It's yours. Yep. Well, to use. And uh, I'm like, cool. So we have basically this much space as well yep. outside beside the building. So we have two, two sea cans outside as well okay. that we use. Um, but, you know, in the winter, it's a big pain to get out there, open that up and, right. and deal with that. So, so you built. Wall? This was actually here. This was this is the uh, yeah the dock seal. Okay. Yeah, so that was already here. So that's just a very short seal. Yeah. I, I mean, still feel cold wind coming in, yeah, but exactly. uh, yeah, it's not. Well, because this is the kind of garbage. You don't that's know just the put. garbage, right? Like, <laughs> where do you put all these you know all the extra, extra wire yeah. pipes, whatever? I mean, there's still a lot of this is. Obviously, we're still in construction of here, course. but... Um, and most of it is necessary, right? but, but you don't want it next to a CNC machine. Even raw material storage, right? right You've right. got bars of raw material, you know, you can... Do you worry about, I mean, temperature controlling your raw material before it goes in the machine kind of thing? Absolutely. Right. But, I mean, once we're ready to actually manufacture, stuff would sit in here for, you know, a week before it goes out, like before it would go to a machine yeah. anyways, right? Okay. So. That's that's you know extra raw material that you don't need in a normal situation. Right. Do you guys have a forklift? We do. We have two. <laughs> we have our electric. Yep. Yep. So we've got the electric, and then we've got a we've got a diesel as well. Okay. So we use this inside the building, and then we've got the the diesel for you know going outside, sea cans, shipments. Whatever. So here's a question: Do you? prep all of your own stock from big raw material or do you buy chunks? Um, well, it depends. We use a lot of forged material. So right. in that so case, it's already. it's already forged. Got it. Uh, if we're working from bar stock, then we're buying bar. We used to buy cut bar, right? Uh, but now with a saw, we do that ourselves. Nice. Well, once you have the saw and the forklift and the rack, like we don't have either of those things. Yeah, you've got so the I space just to do this, then you can have it on the wall and, and yeah, away you go. So, so yeah, this is shipping receiving. There's a, this will be sealed off then over here uh, because this area is not temperature controlled. It feels great though. Yeah, I mean, currently it's mix, mixing with this area, but this would not be, I mean, it's temperature controlled, but not to the level of the manufacturing space. So, you know, it's got backup heater and this sort of thing, but uh, you know, when that door opens in the dead of winter, you don't want all that cold yeah. air flowing into the machines. So yeah. the idea here is that this area is then sealed. If this is, needs to be left open for half an hour while you're loading stuff, it doesn't okay. matter. It's not affecting the rest of the building. Everything else is sealed. So do you think it's always going to be a work in progress? Hopefully not. <laughs> but yes, I'm sure it will be. I mean, realistically, you're always, I mean, you know, adding stuff, removing, yeah, changing. Right it is that even 80 percent that you're like okay we can do everything we need to do right now of course there's my wish list of things yes, exactly. how do you keep your wish list like physically like do you have an app on your phone or do you just like talk to people i mean it's yeah i don't really actually list it out it's it's 
more, I guess, just things I want to do that, <laughs> yeah, I know in my mind uh, this is going to be moving, this will be here. Right. You know, yeah, I don't actually keep that on a, on a specific wish list. I mean, the, the guys also have their own wish lists of, oh, I want, you know, I want to rearrange this workbench. I want this over here. This would be better if we had another one of these, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm more, yeah, worried about, okay, we're, you know, how are we going to move these walls? What are we going to seal this with? You know, this kind of thing. So, and then planning for, yeah, okay, if this extension is here. So the extension would be essentially this, yeah, this width and height just punched straight that way. I guess you'd keep the top brace, or I don't know how this works. Yeah, this is, yes, definitely. This is, this is all the columns, beams would all remain. Um, this is already prepped, actually. Our sprinkler system already is trunked there and ready to extend nice. into the, you know, extension over there, yeah. That's the new robot. So that was the one you saw, right? There's the old rail there, right? right? You can yeah, see the yeah. rail at the back there that was feeding the machines. So we basically just pulled that rail and robot out, got some additional racking, and now the new rail and robot. So why the switch to a new rail? Uh, for the additional length and then the weight capacity. Right. So right here, I can see it. yeah, so this one here that was 70 kilograms, that robot. This one here. Yeah, so it, it's a little different than that based on the, the gripper and, and, and extension, but a rough scale of, of weight capacity difference. Mm -hmm. So then this allows us to then handle the larger Dynafix pallets, right? So we can handle these larger, oh, yeah. larger pallets, right? Actual big plates. Yeah. Yeah, so presently, you know, we're handling like that size of that size of pallet. Yeah. Or the smaller, you know, smaller pallets like that, right? Right, right, right. So yeah, on my current I'm gonna have both basically. 148 pallets almost just like this. Right. And then they're they're Eroa. Uh, and then 72 mils basically like that. Right. So yeah, I'll be seeing all this soon. So then yeah, that allows us then to jump up to the larger Larger pallet size. Big boys. Yep. Which is what that machine then handles, right? So. Seven meters. Yep. So that's that's that Dynafix size, wow. right? So this is. Dynafix size, 36,000 RPM spindle, coolant through, uh, HSK 50, so the larger interface, boy, yeah. and uh, all linear motors as well at 100 meters a minute. So that's really, really fast. Really, really fast. 90 is fast. Nine, yeah, 100, 100 meters per minute, that's well, that 4,000 inches a minute, I guess. Yeah. So, very quick. Cool. I have no idea how this works yet. Yeah. That's I'll the five, it. yeah, that's the 530. You'll figure Whether it out. You'll like it. 640 on mine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're on 640, yeah. yeah. So that's 640 is what, uh, what we've got here. So that's the, uh, that's the 640 control. That's a big machine, yep. So. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we talked about that before. Consistency of, of a control is important. And a brand and warranty and exactly. like like maintenance yeah. and tool holders. Like and with them all tied into, they're really all operating as one machine. They're all tied into the same system, right. really. So they all kind of have to be the same. So as so. you grew the company, I mean, you bought the UMAX at one point, yep. as I've now bought from you. Yep. Um, you're playing for the past 10 years, trying to find what's the best fit for what you guys do, and yep. obviously you've settled on an ex excellent machine. Yeah, I mean, it, it, our needs have changed over the years, but, right. uh, but yeah, we've had very good success with these. Um, you know, we're always looking for high, this will be our slowest spindle, the 20,000 RPM. Um, and, but the big interface, six HSK 63, so right. you need that as well. Uh, but yeah, we're typically running at very high speeds, looking for yeah the high spindle speeds, 
lighter cuts. And yeah, those machines have worked very, very well for us in that, in that regard. And then, yeah, also expanding like you are, whoop, expanding, uh, you know, the tool capability as well. So each of the machines have the tool, tool tower. <laughs> Everybody loves that. <laughs> Everyone loves that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that'll also be on the on this machine as well, the tool tower okay. for additional capability, additional capacity. Beautiful. That's a lot of tools. It's over a hundred easy. Yeah, 120. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> So, I, I assume you don't mind that this is taking a while. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> those of you still watching will probably keep watching for another hour if needed. <laughs> so, basically everything produced then in the prototype lab or in the main production area then goes into our inspection area. So, this is now a separate clean room space, um, which is a climatization room for the inspection room. So parts would come here. Oh, sit for like a day or whatever. Sit and wait before they go into the actual inspection room. Right. So now moving in here, we're in a very strictly controlled, even more so, yeah. even more so than the main production environment. Um, so the target target temp in here is, is uh, 20.0 um, at 40% humidity. So we're controlling the humidity and the, the temperature in here. Uh, there's temperature averaging sensors all over the, all over the room that you know, control the, the temp in here. Again, everything HEPA filtered. So again, clean room space in here. So that's what was our shop floor CMM, now moved into a laboratory space. So it was already quite accurate, uh, now being calibrated to 0.4 microns. So extremely accurate in this controlled environment. You can see the whole machine shaking. We talked say, about that, yeah. I don't wanna bring it up. <laughs> Why is the machine shaking? You almost feel yeah, dizzy seeing such a huge, heavy item shaking around. This is on an active air suspension system. Okay. So as this huge column moves back and forth, the machine actively counters that motion by, you know, lifting the machine and, and balancing it. With so, yeah. granite plates, like everything? The entire structure, this whole so structure, it's, the it's entire machine. It's all one unit. It's all one unit. So it's like the whole thing is... To itself or whatever. Yep, so the whole thing is floating on air. As that column moves, it it, it dampens, the, dampens the, that motion. Inertia. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it's trippy to see. I'm like, I, it's very weird. Should I ask him about? Yeah. That? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit dizzy here. This machine looks like it's moving. <laughs> Clearly, it shouldn't be. This thing weighs a lot. So. So you develop clever little pictures. Yeah. Exactly. Slap your blades on there. And, and then uh, yeah, automated inspection of that we do a hundred percent inspection of everything we make so yep. with reports for each one so if there's a problem you can point fingers yep. you have to yeah well for what you guys do for sure so again another cmm so you know you see how many machines we have we have a lot of inspection equipment as well to back up all the stuff we're making because we're doing so much inspection and of course we're you know, we're fighting such a narrow tolerance band that, you know, scrap tends to be high. You know, we have, you know, very poor CPKs because we're, you know, we're dealing with a very tight tolerance band. Yeah. It's, uh, and there's, there's fluctuations everywhere. So you're always trying to reduce those yes. fluctuations. And like, yeah. like obviously having the measurement equipment lets you further validate where the fluctuations are yes. and then get rid of them. Yep. So I would hope over the past five years, your throughput has been 
increasing better. for sure, yeah. Uh, Certainly moving to this building and putting the equipment in you know, a better space, way better temperature control has really, really helped as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, we've seen a, a big improvement in, in quality just with really, really tight temperature control. I see it, yeah. I noticed it with my both my lathes. Yeah. When they're hot, they're happy. When they're cold, they're grumpy. You open yeah. the door for two minutes and it's, and it's like the yeah. next part smaller or yep. bigger. That's like one good. machine's bigger, the other machine's smaller, depending right. on that. And I'm like, okay. Which way the breeze wraps around the shop. And temperature yeah. control is huge. It like is. when you're really shooting for tents yep. or microns or yep. surface finishes or whatever. Stability, yep. vibration, temperature. So this machine, yes. I'm sure you're gonna excitedly yeah. explain this one to me. Yes. When I when I went to Germany to see my future machine, you were there's my knife. Yeah. Uh, you were also in Germany, right? Yes. Um, yeah, Austria. Yeah. Austria, looking yep. at this machine. Yeah, exactly. Eh. What's this? <laughs> this is Mike's Norseman. What's this? Uh. So yeah, we thought we'd throw that on there for <laughs> for you. Um, so how is this different? It's not a CMM. It is a CMM, but it's optical. So you have, I don't know, sort of like a scanning electron microscope that then moves around like a CMM. So uh, it's extremely, extremely accurate, enabling you to do surface finish analysis, uh, okay. very tight tolerance measurements as well. So I'm just gonna um, bring parts up here once a week. And we'll, we'll... well, exactly. So, so that's the scan for the, for the blade surface, right? Is this like, um, what do you call that? Optical? Um... Yeah, focus variation. So yeah. it's... It, like people do it manually with the light bulb and the little glass thing. This is color varied to show the actual texture of the part. Okay. So yeah. it's basically, normally this surface looks a little So it usually looks like right. this. And so that just shows the scale of uh, what the actual image okay. shows. Uh, this is actually the finish that our tools make on your knife, on your knives. Blade. Yeah. So this shows the scallops that are produced by that uh, three-eighths ball nose that we make for you. Yep. And so this just verifies the surface finish quality between each of the scallops. It's kind of interesting. You can see how the scallops move and then the finish of each so batter mark. One scallop, two scallop, like yep. each step exactly. over, basically. Yeah. Exactly. And then the finish within that scallop, right? So yeah. So and that's like you can see the line here. That's measuring that actual data set. So that's a 3D scan data set that's then sliced to produce this 2D graph, right? Yeah, In that space. Right. If we're getting technical, I think the blade that's on your knife is older than bef before oh. you guys made me the tools. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so maybe don't that use this data. Older, that's true. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't use this data to change the tools you're making for me. Gotcha. But, uh... Well, then it looks like I need an upgrade. <laughs> Um, so cool. But yeah, the point is, the point is, you can you know collect a a, a 2D surface, well 3D surface like that, in a patch, and then you can slice it in whatever direction you want to measure surface finish. Right. So the classic way is the uh, yeah, like a drag kind of thing. But right. this is actually collecting a 3D you know data set. So, we just so an example here, Kanye made a scan before of some of the surface finishes on key features of our impellers as well. So this okay. shows a number of different features that we like to control for surface finish. So this has the, uh, the blade. Because you leave a step over, like you have yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. So we have the blade finish here, and this is actually, um, it's overlaid on top of an STL model that we imported from right. the customer. And so this allows us to show the, um, the actual. Your, your actual with the uh, theoretical. Absolutely, yeah. exactly. And so not only does it show roughness uh, with the uh, waviness of the cutting surface, but also shows the, uh, the geometrical overlay. So it shows where parts may have uh, uh, differed from the model to the actual. Right. And so uh, basically it, it kind of makes all these measures in terms of a centered space and then uh, applies the same uh, coordinate system to the model and then compares the two. Well, I just realized it's a five axis. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a five axis trunnion, yeah. So. So you can actually relate, you know, like if you wanted to check the thickness of the blade as well, you can scan here and then scan the other side, check the roughness on both sides, see how they compare, and then also check the geometry. I see why you're excited about this machine. It's <laughs> yeah. very unique, for sure. Yeah. So the tools are the impeller was mounted like this, 
And this actually is just a 3R. On a 3R, yeah. Yep. And so that just pops onto the top there. And then you're able to manipulate the workpiece as well with the five. Like a, an expansion clamp at the top yeah, there. Which is pretty. And then it uh, zeroes itself, I guess? Yeah, exactly. Well, when it, it I mean, it, the part can be in space, like the CMMs, right? We're not concerned about locating the part in space. You need to measure the datum and then relate everything to the datum of the part. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. So, every drawing's got here are your datums huh. that constrain all of the other features of that component. So, you know, unlike, you know, when you're machining, you want to, you know, to work off of that datum to do your next operation. Here, we're, part is just floating in space. We're yeah. finding those datums and then measuring all the other features to those datums. So likewise here, we can say, okay, we're concerned about you know, the, 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 how straight is the blade to the, the pivot axis, for example, right? So you could, this is assembled obviously, but it was just the blade, you could measure that pivot axis. And then you know, what is the distance of the tip of the blade from that pivot axis? How straight is that blade? So you could scan, if you held it right, you could scan the entire thing and compare it to a CAD model. Yes. And be like, actually, your blade is not opening. Right. You know, like, uh, your blade is opening this far. Yes. Not this far like it's supposed to. Exactly. Um, yep. That is so cool. Yeah, and then flatness across all of this or whatever you yeah. want to measure, you know. And yeah, even flatness and parallelism. Exactly. Holy all cow. of those things. And then, you know, I yeah, mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, included in all that is that, so you can see there, there's the geometry analysis, but then also the surface roughness at each of those points, right? That's, so That's a lot of machines put in one. It is, it's, it's quite amazing. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times you're trying to evaluate roughness. How are you, like, you know, if you wanted to know the, the, the surface finish in this pivot hole, right. How are you going to do that? Are right? you trying to drag into a hole? You can't really evaluate that. While here we can look into the hole and evaluate the surface finish in that hole. So if you had an actual cylinder, yep. you can you can yeah, like that. Right. So you, they must be looking, limited to some depth, we're but looking down into that. Oh, hole. looking even crooked. Yeah. That's amazing. Like like this blows me away because normally you'd either drag yeah. or you do a point cloud. Exactly. Where it like does a billion little points, but this is just optical. It's like, yeah. hey, I see you, yeah. and you're higher than you, and right. then, exactly. and that green square there is your viewing. Angle. That's the yeah, that's the viewing size. So that's actually the largest viewing size. Okay, so so, so yeah, that's the 15, 1500, right? So one point five millimeters. That's down to, you know, one hundred and fifty there. Yeah. We go lenses. Yeah, so this has an auto lens changer as well. So it's, you know, goes through and automatically changes lens, lenses. That'd be marvelous to me. Yeah. <laughs> just on the rig, yeah, just change your lenses. Yeah, and then it gives you all your, yeah, exactly. You can also do a volumetric analysis. So if you want to look at, a, well, a patch and know like what is the volume of space beneath the peaks or at the average peak height. So if you, you know, you imagine the, like a mountain range, that's your surface, right. and now you pour an right. ocean into the mountain range. A nanometer ocean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What's sticking above, you know, yeah. and below that level, yeah. right? Exactly. And how much water went in to fill those mountains, right? So my big question is, was it more expensive than my Kern? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you paid, but I think it was pretty close, probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's that's not a not a small investment, but yeah, very useful for us. For yeah. I mean Nathan's already geeking out like crazy. Oh yeah, I love this. It's amazing. And useful. Like yes. actually truly yeah. incredible. Well, and I mean, you know, if you needed to know which comes up with us, you want to know the the roughness of this channel, right? Right. That channel how would you even measure that? That's the where the chip is, is flowing, flowing. Out, exactly. Right? So that's pretty important. What is the roughness of that, you know? Yeah. And how to do it better, or maybe sometimes you want it rougher, I don't know. Exactly. Depends on materials. That's exactly right. Yeah, do you want a welded edge, do you not? What does that do? How does it affect the geometry of the tool? Yeah. This sort of thing, right? So do you guys actually look at, you make a tool, you cut it, you cut material, do you look at the chip and like 
see how shiny it is and see how it forms and you know what I mean? Like, because like, yeah. how you design the tool is how the chip is formed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, how are you using that tool? Are you, you know, are you using it properly to form the right chip to cut properly, right? And depending hmm. on the material, that can be really critical. Aluminum chip formation, stainless chip formation is really yeah. critical to tool development. Yeah. So we've had some experience with that as well. It's, it's really neat to be able to take a look at the chips and just see what type of thickness you're able to achieve. Yeah. And, uh, and you're right, to, and to a degree, the surface quality of the chip. You put the chips on here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah. cool. So yeah, that's a very, very useful tool. I scanned the surface of your knife uh, with one of the finer lenses. Okay. To be able to get, um, this kind of amount of detail, but that is so that is one of the scallops right there. But this is in between the scallops, so it's a very good surface in between each scallop. So, yeah, it's very impressive for a machine surface. Love it. <laughs> Again with the curved monitors. Yep. Oh yeah. I saw them and I was like, man, I kind of want a pair now. <laughs> pretty awesome. Wow. You can't go back now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're pretty awesome. Sweet. So, yeah, so then Flo, there's Connie, inspection manager, so she can oversee things from there. Uh, so then, yeah, Flo from, from inspection, once items are released, then into controlled finished goods space. So everything in this room is now ready to ship. Um, it might be inventory, it's maybe prepping for a shipment, but everything in here is now being released from inspection to finished goods. Okay. So now whether it ships or not is just a decision of, you know, the orders and dates, not whether or not the part is good. Right, right. So, so then, yeah, everything packed here. And then double doors here, so we can, you know, get a pallet jack in here, and then all the components flow out to shipping. Right. Back where we started. And then the rest of the 30,000 square feet is offices. It is basically offices. There's one more room you might be interested in. Okay. Uh, yes, the the noisy the noisy loud room. Right. Yes, in the. Uh, from the first door. Yeah. So this is all the messy junk that's normally in the middle of the machine shop, yeah. creating noise and heat and so so this is the oil chiller and filter, so we're we're targeting you know 22.0. So this is heating and cooling the oil, keeping it at the exact temperature we want, filtering everything and then delivering it, you know, pressurizing it and delivering it up the main main line. So that's our high pressure, low pressure and waste return. So did you guys build that infrastructure yourself, the piping, or did you have guys come in to do we it? We had guys come to do it, yeah. Like so we said, designed we designed it all and right. then they came and did it. Like you said, your so. guys are more valuable making parts. Yeah, and not as good at plumbing. Exactly, so. right? <laughs> I mean, Why would we? Yeah. There's that bootstrapper in me that's still like, well, do it all yourself. Like I can take care of that. But then, no way, like we have a really. we have a profitable business now that's like can't go it down. It's your focus. Yeah, right? and everybody's yeah. really exactly. Yeah. So yeah, to take one of them and put it on something that you can hire someone who's going to do a better job than you will, anyways, right? I mean, it's, sure you can do this stuff, but a proper electrician's going to do it better. A proper plumber's going to do it better. All these, you know, to do that yourself is. At some point, you got to say no. This is for some reason it's like e outsourced. it's easy to buy machines, but it's hard to like spend money on infrastructure. All the other stuff, yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So that's that's the two main. These are the well. This is filtering the oil and chilling or heating the oil to keep it at temp. Okay. So all of the all of the waste carbide that's produced in the grinding it's process, so which is a lot, is carried on that waste line filtered and then the oil is chilled and returned to the machine, yeah. pressurized and returned to the machine. And then this is our, yes, exactly. So this is a, a 40 ton uh, two-stage chiller for the water. So this is 
Uh, process water for the uh, for the chillers that. Uh, not the RO water. Not the RO water. Cool it top up. Exactly. This is chilling chilling the chillers. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That are then chilling the internal closed loop. Right. Like system. We about before, yeah. yeah. So that's like a glycol system that's running in the machine okay, so that's like, chilling the spindle. Yeah. It's like antifreeze. Yeah, like antifreeze basically. That's running in the in the machine, chilling the spindle, the drives, that sort of thing. Yep, yep runs out to the chiller to exhaust heat. This water then picks up the heat, yeah. puts it into here, and then the way the heat goes out along these lines, yeah. this is now a refrigerant that's running in these lines, right? This is like, a, like in an air conditioner, this is the refrigerant that's running um, out these lines and then goes out to a huge condenser outside to, Does you know. Does it look like a household air conditioner? Just big? Um, okay. Yeah, really, really big. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. show you that. But yeah, it's a huge, huge compressor outside. So yeah, this is not running yet. I mean, it's winter. We're not too worried about this, but yeah. that's all plumbed and ready to run and hook up to all these machines. And then variable frequency drive air compressor. So, big so big. all the shop, yeah, all the shop Air is, comes from this unit, goes into our tank, through the dryer, and out to the machines. And you have a couple tanks around the shop. Uh, we've, this is the main supply tank, which buffers the, the air compression. So yeah. when, the, when the system sees that air is required, you know, you're not straining the compressor by, by you know, constantly cycling. This provides capacitance and buffer to the entire system. And then, yeah, we've got one more tank that's at the far end of the shop that provides additional capacitance. Yeah. How do you guys handle like maintenance? Cause you got so much going on, like filters yeah. and you know, air drains and carbide fill, like. Good, good question. So we used to do all that, yeah, like, yeah, it gets loud in here. <laughs> uh, Let's, uh, we'll head this way to the cafeteria. Um, we used to handle that all, whoever was running the machine was really responsible for that machine. They had to, to do all their old oils and, you know, emptying chip bins and all that sort of thing. Um, we got to a point where, where, especially now in this new building, it really made sense to sort of centralize a lot of that. So, so Matt was our facilities manager, so he's now in charge of, maintaining the building and then all of the machines. So, you know, emptying chip bins, maintaining oil levels and, you know, coolant, coolant concentration. So he's dealing with all of that, maintaining all the machines and then the building itself as well. Is a full-time job? It is, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, really just maintaining the building wouldn't be, but then you add all the machine stuff that's, and- That's a lot. Absolutely, that's a lot to do. Yeah. So, you know, and then still, I mean, we've got, you know, there were 120 parking spaces, so it was a big parking lot to be <laughs> dealt with. So we have a company that deals with the exterior maintenance and that sort of stuff, right. but snow plowing and, snow plowing and yeah. everything. But yeah, Matt's dealing with you know the building itself. Right, right. So now this is a kitchen. Yeah, so we gutted all this and, and put all this in. Um, really, this was the thing. You know, <laughs> you see the signs on the door. <laughs> um, so you know, with clean room facilities, you don't want people walking around with you know, food and, 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 you know, eating a sandwich at the machine and stuff like that. So, so, and now with the larger building too, we're spread out all over the building, people aren't running into each other anymore. So really the idea here was to have a nice cafeteria that everybody can come to you eat lunch and you interact with everybody in one yeah, space. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're forced to eat here. Okay. Nobody's eating at their desk anymore, but you know, that's then your opportunity to socialize and, and does it, work? it does, okay, okay. it works well. Yeah. Because yeah. we've got, at the new shop, there's two buildings. So one's going to be the machine shop. They're yep. close, but there's like, you know, 30 feet between them, whatever. Yep. One's going to be a machine shop. One's going to be finishing. And really, there's like two guys in the front building and seven, uh, like six of us in the back. Right. And I'm like, you are we ever going to see each other? Yeah. I'm, so, I'm worried about that. I really yeah, am. So would, we're trying to like that. plan what machine goes where, even the small stuff, so right. that there is back and forth. Yep. And lunch over here. And that's, yeah, it's good if you're... Yeah, eating in one place together, you know, yeah, then, yeah. then yeah, you're running into people you may not otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, works well. And then impromptu discussions happen too. Sure. Hey, what about this? What about that? You know, and you end up talking about stuff that otherwise you may not discuss. For sure. So. So how many people work in this building now? 
Uh, total is 36 now, split roughly equally between the two companies, uh, between Camp Leet and Milterra. Uh, obviously space for much more than that, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, you could probably fit easy 100 people in here. Yeah, about 100, yeah, yeah. easily. So, yeah, I mean, 100, easily 100 people in offices, yeah. never mind, you know, people out in the yeah. shop, yeah. So, certainly lots of space. Yeah, and then, yeah, I plan to extend this out here and have a patio out here, barbecue, and then, you know. Put a door here? Well, there's a door right there, so you can just okay. go out here and, yeah, you've got your patio here, and that's, I don't know if you can see it here, there's that huge exchanger right there yeah. for the, uh, for the like, waste heat. Like feet, feet by your feet. <laughs> and then behind it is a huge generator as well, so we've got a natural gas generator backup. If the power goes down? If the power goes down. It's not large enough to handle a machine, but part of this was running all of the supplementary systems on, on that generator. So, you know, if machine goes down, well, you got all that oil in the machine that's now coming out, and if your return pump's not running anymore. <laughs> the downside is centralizing it. Right? Exactly. So, oh, so those return pumps are all on a backup generator like that so that you know, if that goes, if the machine, if the power goes out, at least all those return pumps are dumping it all back to the, yeah. to the tank. So, <laughs> what an oversight that would be! Like, yeah. I never think about that. <laughs> yeah. First power outage, First like power outage. two feet of water on the floor. Yeah. Oil. So, wow, this has been just amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, I mean, we can we can head through the offices if you want. Um, I mean, whatever, this is a minor thing, but... I love the minor things. Okay, well, um, you know, something was making sure that we've got, like, a proper place as well for... Okay, when you get dirty in the shop, yeah. don't go to the normal washroom. Go to a place that, okay, this is a shop washroom, you know, you need to, to make a mess. You've got dirty hands, great, wash them there. Don't go to the main, you know, yeah. office and wash your hands there, so... These are, these are actually kind of, a lot of space in here, but if you want to look at the sink there, that's, a, that's an auto sink that is quite useful as well. It's a, like a Dyson auto sink. Those are quite handy. What is that? Whoa! What? Okay, I gotta try that again. Okay, turn off. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands. Oh, that's lean right there. Cool. Just two dudes in a bathroom, no big deal. <laughs> I thought you were going to do that. I got a camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of office space up here. So this is obviously all camp lead up in this in this space. Is it nice to kind of separate? Um, it's nice, yeah, but also, you know, you don't then tend to to mingle unless you know you're uh, unless you're running into each other at the in the cafeteria. So yeah, tons tons of additional office space here. All this was here. All the furniture was here. So yeah. So that uh, that worked out well. Got your health and safety stuff, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, lots of room for expansion here for you know customer support and and software development. Oh, let's go this way. I mean, simple things like you know in the old building we like no longer had a place to meet. You know, we used up all of the... We meet between all the machines. Yeah, there's like... there's compressors and it's loud. Yeah, totally. So we, you know, to actually have a boardroom is like, yeah, finally, you know, some space to, uh, to meet and talk. Yeah. Yeah, we lost that in the old building. It was like, okay, we need this space for, for people. So <laughs> let's just take that out and put in cubes. So that was, that was a pain. No, it seems like you guys are do, doing great here. 
That's exactly what you needed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let me show you a quick guy here. <laughs> future, future plans. I remember the first time I was here, we were walking through and Mike had put like post-it notes on every door. It's like, <laughs> Jeff goes here, Mike goes there, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's like, nobody complain. I'm just yep, choosing this is your office. How did that work out? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I think, I think, pretty sure Jeff came at one point and switched them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <they> yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, yes, worked yeah. out, worked out pretty good. Um, we've got additional space here for, uh, plan here is to do a bit of a gym actually. Yeah, you were that. yeah so cool. sort of a lounge gym area, you know, put up a projector and big screen TV with a sofa and then, and then. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, but then you have treadmills here. You can, I mean, even just. You know, you're working on a laptop or whatever, you can put it on a treadmill, catch up on some email. You know, you want to do a little workout in the morning. You don't have to go to the gym, then shower, then here. You can come here, work out, shower downstairs, and you're done. So what's under us? Is this the, the clean So room? Uh, roughly, uh, the clean room is, is under uh, about this point here. So, so, like so yeah, that's all clean room under there. Cool. And then, yeah, this is the hallway here. And then this is kind of over the, you know, cafeteria and stuff like that. The airlock and that. More office space. <laughs> yeah. So had they even listed it yet? Or was your realtor just like? Uh, it, it was listed. It had, it had, you know, but yeah. Our, uh, our realtor was like, you gotta look at this place. This just came on the market. So yeah, we were the, the first people through and right there. yeah, exactly. So excellent had you actually looked at other places? And oh yeah. Yeah. We looked at many, many places. Yeah. yeah. It's hard saying no. Right? It's hard saying no, but you know, honestly it was always, the issue was always the office balance, right? It was just like a thousand square feet of office and 29,000 square feet of shop. Okay, that's great. Lots of shop space, but... Where's everyone gonna... Yeah, you, you have a 50-50 business, basically. Pretty much, yeah. Right. So, so here, we're short on shop space, but it's a lot easier to build shop space than offices. So, you know, especially with the way the building is designed, we can just punch out the back and, and add another 10,000 square feet. And then yeah. you're not adding kitchen... Like exactly. Kitchen All the stuff like that, yeah, expensive stuff to build is already right. here. All the... Even your infrastructure, like all the air plumbing, all the, the coolant stuff we just looked at. That's all it's ready all to go yeah, so for it's scalable. a larger building. Yeah. I love it. It's an excellent plan. Yeah. All the water connections, sprinkler, everything can all just yep. have to the extension. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having us. This, yeah, is, no problem. this is so much fun. Yeah. That was so much fun. <laughs> you liked it. It was like, I think, I think I got everything I wanted out of that. I mean, I'm sure we could talk for days about all this stuff. For There's sure. so many details and, and you're like, oh, this is cool. This little thing, the sink, like yeah. I want that sink. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really appreciate you having us over. Thanks this for coming. Was, you were bugging me via text and you're like, yeah. you gotta come up, you gotta come up. And uh, I'm glad we did. I'm glad we finally did. Yeah. Uh, so now I get to process for a couple of days and hopefully make some tweaks to the way that we're building our shop. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot. Awesome. I can tell you had a lot of fun with this and a lot of stress. We did, yeah. And, it, was, uh, it was difficult, but yeah, it's worked out very well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's business. Yeah, it's absolutely. it's it's like one of the hardest things you can possibly do is to run a growing, like, successful business. But yeah, it's sure. so rewarding and it's so much fun, and you love what you do, and I love what I do. And absolutely. That's that's it. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Any final words? I don't think so. Thanks for coming. All right. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs>